super frustrated with himself right now. He just oh, resigns the game. Wow. Incredible, Danny. Wait till you see what happens in this game. In the words of Eric Hansen, it's incredible. So this is Magnus Carlsen playing with black against Hikaru Nakamura with white. And it's the 2017 Speed Chess Championships on chess.com. We're rewinding. We're going old school, but it's worth it. So E4 from Hikaru. Magnus goes e5, we get the two knights on the board, and now d4, the scotch game. Always nice to see something different, other than bishop c4 or b5, right? So Magnus captures, we see knight takes back, and now there's different moves for black. I myself play knight f6, I like that variation, I think it's called demises. Now you get bishop c5 as well as a key move, but what we see in this game is bishop b4 check. And the idea is you provoke c3, then drop back to c5, and therefore the knight can't develop to the most optimal square. So knight f5 now from Hikaru, and this is a sideline. The main move there was bishop e3, second main move capturing the knight. So this hits the pawn, we see g6 dealing with that threat, and you don't want to come in, deliver the check, or after the king sidesteps, you're actually losing that knight, it's trapped. So instead, we see bishop e3, a tactical way to deal with the attack. Because if you capture here, the knight recaptures. And if you take here, we win the bishop. And although you win a pawn, this is actually good for white. You know, the queen's streaming out, the knight's developing. So instead, after this bishop e3 move, here Magnus drops the bishop back. And we see the knight drop back into d4. So bishop g7, pawn g3 also prepares to fianchetto. We get knight f6 pressuring the central pawn. There's still no e5 because the knight covers this square. And after bishop g2, both players castle. And here Magnus has a choice actually. Sorry, not right here. First rook e8 hits the pawn, knight d2, and now here. So Magnus goes d6. He could have gone d5 trying to strike at white center immediately. <coughs> Excuse me. And after captures, you're actually leading to an exchange sack in the best line that the computer finds. So instead of capturing here with that pawn, it says taking here is best, forking these two, pawn recaptures, then taking, you do walk into this fork, but the idea is you get huge compensation with the bishops and the pawn, the slightly open king. Okay, not easy to sap the exchange. But the reason I show that is that after pawn d6, well, Hikaru's got the center and just has a really pleasant position now to play, as we'll see. Now, there's a threat to go knight g4. You've just opened up the bishop to support the knight jump. Hit this bishop, which you don't want to give up. So pawn h3 covers. And now knight e5 from Magnus is provocative because it's asking for f4 to be played, which Hikaru does. Now you could jump to d3, instead Magnus goes in this direction, but same difference, you're heading for c5 and trying to pressure this pawn, which has just been weakened slightly with the advance of the last f-pawn push. Now, if you try and stop this knight coming to c5 by playing pawn b4, this is a mistake because knight d5 is the tactical shot you can land. If captures, well the rook takes here, this is good for black. And if you drop the bishop back, well obviously you're dropping a pawn here. So you don't wanna try and stop this knight from landing on c5. Instead, Hikaru tucks back the bishop, gets out of the tactics, also covers this pawn in the event of knight h5, and opens the e-file for the rook. So yes, knight c5 lands, but queen c2 adequately covers against it. So bishop d7, Magnus continues developing. We get rook f to e1, that f file is now blocked by the bishop. We see a5 seeking to secure the knight outpost, and this second rook centralizes, eyes the queen in the distance. So we see queen c8 hitting this pawn, the king covers, and now pawn h5, a common idea, looking to undermine this pawn and make this one weak. Magnus's play is generally directed at the dark squares, trying to use this bishop. And now great move by Hikaru. He drops this knight back from its central outpost, but it's so powerful because it stops this pawn pushing, also looks at the g5 dark square, but importantly, it now supports the e5 push. And once that pawn pushes on, well, black wants to capture, but then this knight would be loose. Now you can go b6, it's the computer's top move, but Magnus goes knight e6 to defend against that threat. 
we see pawn e5 anyway captures the knight takes back an h4 magnus seeking counterplay but visually you can just see hikaru's got the better of it here right now he decides to take on d7 pick up the bishop pair not a bad move but not forced he could have started with f5 and if ever black captures on g3 you're recapturing the bishop with the bishop you hold this pawn you're quite happy so we see takes here the knight recaptures now f5 and magnus drops this knight back it adds some cover to g6 and also supports this knight and we'll see the relevance of that in a moment now g4 from hikaru so he opens up the bishop to attack the h pawn and it's really hard to defend if you do something incredibly ugly like that you're running into knight e4 and imagine going f6 i mean this is just positional suicide for this bishop and you're critically weakening that square no light squared bishop to help defend and equally if you go bishop here it's also very passive you're still running into knight e4 so magnus checks the king steps back and he lands a bishop here. So he's still shedding a pawn in the long run because after this exchange and knight e4, you know, this one's not long for this world. But okay, he's tried to do it in a more dynamic manner. But Hikaru better and it's really hard to find a move for black. You know, this knight is glued to d7 because otherwise you're running into knight f6 check. This one has to stay supporting that one or there'd be ideas of rook takes here, landing the same check. If you go c6, you weaken this square critically. So the top computer move is rook a6, lending defense. Now Magnus goes for a variation on that. He takes, pawn recaptures, then rook a6. So he's opened his king, not pleasant, but it's a tough position to play. Queen d3 prepares to recoup that pawn with the queen, very nice. The king sidesteps in anticipation. The pawn drops anyway, and now knight h7. So with the king sidestepped, you know, there's not the same threats of takes here and knight f6, plus the rook covers, and Magnus is now going for this dark square blockade. And after queen h4, he achieves it with this knight moving into f6. But here Hikaru had a great move with knight g5, and it's very, very logical and principled. You know, you don't want to exchange pieces when you're the side attacking and the side with the space. You only help your opponent unravel unless you've literally seen a killer blow. Now, it does allow these rooks to come off and the pawn to drop, but then there's good moves for white. One is the immediate takes, but even stronger is bishop b7 with tempo against the rook. So after, say, rook b6, now you've cleared the g-file and rook g1 is threatening checkmate in one. Queen g6 forced to cover this pawn. You know, you can't come to e6 to cover. The knight's covering that square. And now you can simply play bishop e4. I mean, I say simply, these aren't easy tactics. But you decoy this knight away and then you take here. And now if the queen recaptures, this is the critical variation, you check from the back rank. The queen has to block, this is a mate. There are some other lines, but it's just killing for white. So the key move was knight g5, running it all the way back here, you know, keeping pieces on the board. But Hikaru captures, and this is a bit criminal, because now the rooks come off as well as the knights, and here, you're not even winning the b7 pawn or the f7 pawn. You're meekly defending this one. And suddenly, Magnus has got these ideas of setting up a dark square blockade. So queen f4 played, looking at the e5 square, setting up a nasty pin. We see queen d8 preparing to meet queen e5 with queen d6. Now rook g1, and after queen d6, okay, Hikaru doesn't stop the queens, would only help Magnus. He threatens mate, the queen covers, and now bishop d5, trying to in uh, increase the scope of that bishop, you know, it doesn't have to babysit the pawn anymore. So rook h6 from Magnus, great move, looks at this king's pawn here on h3, also prepares to bring knight f6, forcing these two. So queen d4 check played and knight f6 was the response. Looks shaky, but there's no dark squared bishop for white, so you can get away with this. Bishop g2 covers this pawn, queen e7, queen d2 hits that rook, and again, nice from Magnus, tricky. You can go here rook h5 or king h7, but he goes for knight g4. Using the fact that the pawn is pinned, covering the rook like this, and setting up sneaky ideas of queen e5, queen h2, checkmate. 
So we see queen, uh, not queen e1, rook e1 covering the e-file, but now the queen swings out here. Now there's these kind of check ideas. Great counterplay from Magnus. The rook checks. Magnus steps up here. He wants to come off the dark square diagonal. Still we see the queen come to that square. Threatening mate. And you can drop back with the knight now, but Magnus seizes the moment to get the queens off the board. So check, and he opens up this one here. So the king moves with the idea being that after the pawn comes off, pawn recaptures, that by coming here instead of to g1, well now you cover this pawn, there's no knight takes on h3 at the end of the line. So rook d6 now played. Now there is a threat to go rook e7, which was played, but rather than start with king g7, you know, Magnus started with this one, he's going for the active counterplay against the d-pawn. Classic super GM technique, they want counterplay. Now, if you swap pawns here, say Hikari takes and takes, well actually, this is making black's drawing task much easier, because the queen, uh, not the queen, the king's gonna sit quite well blockading this pawn, possibly it could become weak one day, and then you've just got a three on three really. I mean, still tricks for white, but black should be able to hold. But coming back here, we see d5 from Hikaru. So he wants to keep that pawn on the board for the c pawn. And now knight d3 from Magnus, and this is classy, because after captures on c7, he does not take here. I mean, how many of us would be doing that, right? but then you run into rook c6, really problematic. You know, if you take, that pawn is going through, and if you don't take, well then you shed this one here, not good. So instead, knight b4 covers this square, also eyes this pawn, and if you go a3, well okay, we can just take, and actually we're okay. So what does Hikaru do? Well after knight b4, he goes rook c3, setting a sneaky trap, if you take, then there's rook d3 and you're picking up a piece, that one can't move or you drop the rook. So Magnus, instead, he drops back the rook. If he takes this pawn, by the way, again rook c6 is the problem. So he drops the rook here, this time with the idea that if a3, now you take rook pins but there's knight f6, covering the rook, getting out of the pin. And that's why Hikaru, now he pushes on with pawn f6 check. Not the best though, best was to march in with the king. But this allows the king to capture, now this is the idea, a3, knight captures, and this time when you pin, there's no knight b6, there's no knight f6, you can't cover the rook. But there is king e5. This is Hikari's idea though from a distance. Liquidate, drag the king away, and then surely the outside passer is winning. But it's not. Pawn h4, it gives a question mark by the way because it says king g3 was better to keep it in the realms of drawing. Pawn h4 played though, the king centralizes, this one comes, f5, and now it's this race right, but both players queen at the same time. It's just all unraveled for Hikaru. And the worst part that shows he's on full tilt now is he should check from e5. I mean, there are other checks too, but this one's simple. You can't step to a light square, or you're gonna get your king skewered to your queen, you're gonna lose your queen. So you have to come to f2 or d2, you know, d is logical, but then check, king goes, and you pick up a pawn. You know, simple stuff, really. But what we see instead is queen c3 check. Now you can interpose with the queen and you're not picking up this pawn. And you can't swap queens, by the way, or the king takes, and this one's much closer, it's lost. Suddenly, Hikaru's fighting to hold the draw. So he checks, king e2, queen c6, hits this pawn, queen d4 check, covers this pawn, and after king f5, we see king d3, marching over, trying to munch these pawns. Now, queen c1 was best here, but instead, we see king e6, not best. You can see black's now winning. Magnus takes on b2, not the most precise, but still challenging for white. We get pawn a4, now queen b4, targets that pawn, queen f3 check, the king comes to c2, and here we see resignation from Hikaru. Why? Well, he's low on time, and if you check like this, you're pushing the king towards the pawn. Now, interestingly, this does seem to be quite drawish, because the computer finds these ways to just keep checking the king. 
But okay, in practice, it looks like at some point the king will escape, then this pawn will drop, and you'll be two on zero pawns, right? Just completely winning. Although actually, Hikari should have played on, but he was just tilting. So a classic encounter. I hope you found this game instructive. To see another amazing game, check out the video on screen, and thanks very much for watching. See you soon.